What up guys? Grumpy Jeff here with another Raid Shadow Legends Champion Review. Today we're looking at Lady Quillen, an epic attack champion from the Banner Lords. And she is pretty epic looking as well with just a sweet hammer, nice little pouch, some satchel, the triple swords, a helmet she doesn't wear because she's just too cool, and a nice secondary hammer for when things get real nitty gritty. She's, a, like I said, an attack champion, has a pretty good base attack there, pretty good base speed as well. Obviously, defense is lacking and wanting. Let's go ahead and look at the A1 here. It is the Mistress of Mallets. Attacks one enemy, fills the champion's turn meter by 15%. If this attack is critical, that's kind of nice because it's going to play into the fact attack champion, you're thinking you're probably going to want to crit, right? So you're going to be putting crit rate on this champion anyways. So this kind of gives you a little freebie to get that extra turn meter. So we jump over to the A2, the Glory Hound. The name's a little too close to something else, but hey, whatever. Attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if this attack is critical, fills the turn meter of all allies by 30% if this attack kills an enemy. Again, you're already looking to do some mass damage. So killing in waves, killing spiderlings, obviously you're probably not going to pop bosses with this thing, but getting that extra 30% uh, turn meter fill is really, really nice in arena. It also would help to kind of maybe if she could take out a weaker champion on the other team, or if you need another hitter in a, a tag team, something like that, but not bad at all. I wish it was an AOE, but you can't win them all. Um, so we jump to the A3 here. We first to the fight attacks all enemies, places a 30% increased crit damage, sweet, and uh, on allies for two turns and a 50% increase attack buff on all champions if it is critical so you already have that crit rate because you want the a1 so it's kind of nice that it stacks the one thing i personally don't like about this skill is that it's the only aoe in her kit which is fine but you place the buffs after so you smack then you get your buffs and move on so you don't get the buffs with your aoe and that is kind of her biggest fault really kind of hurts a little bit but oh well you can't have them all right so let's go ahead and take a look at how i built this champion out and their masteries and whatnot all right so she is a full-fledged attack champion with a little bit of support capabilities so i pretty much just went and stole the entire kit off of a best from our previous champion review now as you can see here i tried to stack that attack i tried to get her a decent speed went for the full 100 percent crit rate and slapped on some crit damage as well if you we look at the total stats here we got 4300 plus attack we got 206 speed and 225 crit damage so she is built to hit um obviously it's not a super end game but it, it's a pretty decent build um, as we go over to her skills, obviously I ended up fully booking them so you can see them all there So you'll see all the levels that she can hit at and then we have the masteries And I went for something that had to do a little bit more with damage the two things that I was really really keen on getting was uh, Obviously we got the helm smasher because I want that uh, Targets ignoring the targets defense I'm not looking at her to get the extra hits and then the other one I really really wanted was over here um, to get this buff extending I really wanted that buff extension because that's her main thing she does is her A3 buffs just going to help everyone else get those hits in. So I want that. Everything else was just kind of predicated on what's the best advantage, cycling turns, getting uh, more chances to place those buffs and keep them up. So that's what she's built for. Um, as for the kit, as you can see here, it, it's definitely obtainable. This is all farmable. Everything in here was farmable and craftable. Um, this would probably be the high tier stuff right there. Anyways, that's how she's built. Let's go ahead and check out the damage she can put down. So here we have the basic Lady Quillen just going at it. I'm going to go ahead and drop the A3 here. Not bad damage. Looks like 37,000, 33,000 kind of a mixed. Um, nothing too good, nothing too bad. But she does pop off all those buffs on everybody, including herself. So she has two more turns with all of her upgrades. So we'll go ahead and do the A2 here. If she kills somebody, everybody gets that 30% buff. I'm going to go for the heavier health champs and get maximum damage. 64, 65. She's got about 130,000. That's, again, no books, no masteries, no nothing. So a pretty solid hit there. Um, now we're going to do the A1 just to finish it out here. And uh, let's go ahead and drop the hammer, as it were. And boom, 58 thou. Not bad for an A1. Again, this is uh, level 23 dragon. 
So we got that Void Affinity. Now let's go ahead and put those Masteries in. Let's see the difference here. So we got 44, looks like it might have been a 49,000. Not too bad at all. So you can see that there's some decent damage going on. EA2 is going to go up, let's see, a little bit. 80, well, okay, so that's a huge jump. That's about a 15,000 per hit jump on her A2 there. So that's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and do the A1. We get 58, now we're going to 66, so 8,000. I mean, again, it's obviously the champions, you know, all that kind of stuff is gonna change. Now here we have her fully booked, fully masteried. We got this going, here's that A3. Let's see if we can get some serious damage down here. 64, I think is the highest one I saw there. So it's not like, it's not an end game. Again, her buffs come on after she drops it. So it makes a little bit of a, oof. so here's the A2, 74 and 100,000. So the last one was 80 and 80, I believe. So that was seven, it's better. I mean, the second shot, obviously. And then the A1 here, 90, that's a huge gain. So, I mean, she's got it. She's got that slam. All right, so you can see the basic numbers are not too bad for a damage dealer. Nothing fantastic, but considering she adds that buff, she's going to make every other damage dealer around there better, and she has some turn meter control. So it's predicated on killing, but her A2 can hit pretty hard. So as you can see right there with the A2, it does escalate quite a bit when you add masteries and books. It really jumps up and just completely changes it. Now, the A1 is always going to give... A little bit of extra bang there you know because it's it's got that kind of turn meter if crit thing going on for it which is really really nice plus it does some pretty decent damage like i'm not disappointed in those numbers at all i mean it almost rivals the a2 um minus the fact that it's a two hitter on the a2 of course and we're just showing the highest of the two hits there but it does pretty well with that ninety-two thousand on the a1 once it's fully booked so they do add value but as a support champ I'm not so certain I would throw all my books in there when I really just want the buffs. But let's go ahead and see that in practical application. All right, so here we have her in the spider, which is not probably like her best spot, her traditional spot. With her A2, you get a little bit extra if you kill one of the spiderlings, the little the boost, um, as it were. Um, but really what you'd want her here is if you had some of these slammers like these Septimuses who just couldn't get the job done, you get that extra attack, and then you get that extra crit damage, which is gonna help you kind of finish the job. Now we move on to like Hydra and really Hydra, I feel like, again, it's really about getting that attack down, um, getting that crit damage down or up as you were. And then if you can pair them with someone who can extend buffs, that's really gonna be your biggest use. She's kind of like a, a baby mashal a little bit because he kind of does some very similar things with the crit damage buff and all that kind of stuff but she lacks the lead she lacks anything maybe if you blow up ahead you get the 30 percent turn meter increase but you're really not angling for that as you can see she's not going to do just colossal nasty damage but if you build her right she can take a little bit of a beating and she can keep you constantly buffed which is just going to get you those numbers that you really need to get through your normals your hards Probably not the best champ to bring into a Brutal unless you just, I mean, crazy max out. As you can see here, the hits aren't huge, but it's something. It's something. And then we have this arena. Go into the arena here, and um, it's, again, it's really about just making sure that your slammers can slam. Um, she can hit hard enough to kill. She definitely can do that, um, as you can see there. But now she's made sure that Tronda can wipe out Deacon, which I, I don't think is a problem for most people. But there you have it. That's her basic uses. So there she is, just a basic attack champion for the Banner Lord. She's got a pretty cool kit. She's got some nice buffs. But in the end, I think she's just kind of a B plus. Um, I personally wouldn't really recommend building her out with books and masteries. I think she's really just there for the buffs so you can get those extra hits. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to watch the next championship guide recommended up above. Otherwise, have yourself a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching.